Welcome to our lecture online and our next basic shape on molecules. We're going to take a look at planar molecules. And what kind of molecules are planar? Well, a planar simply means, of course, that the, all the atoms are in the exact same plane. Uh, one way to maybe uh, indicate that is to kind of draw a plane like this. And so th that would mean that I could put all the molecules right on this particular sheet. Think of it as a, as a planar sheet. So, what kind of molecules should we consider? Well, let's try boron trifluoride. One boron atom that has three valence electrons, three fluorine atoms that have seven valence electrons, and in desperate need of an eight electron to fill that valence shell. So they're looking at this boron and say, oh, I can like to borrow your three electrons so I can share those, and we can then make those strong bonds. And so what happens is that uh, fluorine and boron will then share Two electrons like that, the three valence electrons from boron are used up, and so here's our Lewis structure. Actually, the Lewis structure, instead of writing it like that, we would probably write it like this, with a single line indicating the double bond. Uh, I'm sure, not the double bond, but the bond with the two electrons. That's not a double bond, that's a single bond. Okay, and then we have the three fluorons here, and the third one there. Okay. So that would be the proper Lewis structure. Now, how does it look like physically? Well, notice that we have these electrons here tied up in bonds, and they repel each other. So the electrons in the bonds between fluorine and boron will repel each other. They want to bend in the direction so that they're as far away from each other as possible. So what you'll end up doing, you'll end up with a situation where you have your central atom, which is boron, and then the three fluorine atoms, which are like this, bend away from one another in such a way that the angle between the bonds is as large as possible. And of course, if they're in a planar shape, the largest angle you can have would be 120 degrees. So each of the angles between the, the fluorines, any two pairs of fluorines, 120 degrees. 120 degrees here, here, and there. So why would it be that they actually are in a planar format? Don't forget that they also have these free electrons. Each fluorine has three free electron pairs. And of course, they repel each other as well. Not only do the bonds repel each other, they repel each other. Everything wants to be as far away from each other as possible. And so here I have a, a little indication of that. So here we go. That's what it should look like. We have boron in the center, three fluorine atoms like that. So the question I would be, why wouldn't they bend towards one another like that? Why would they be in a plane? So if I draw, if I show you like this, say, well, why can't it look like this instead? Well, when it looks like this instead, what you have now is the angle between these connecting, or I should say bonding electrons, is now less than 120 degrees. So the repulsive forces become greater, so that means that they will simply repel each other out again until they're at the maximum bond angle away from each other of 120 degrees. So you can see that there's no other natural position that these bonds can be in, otherwise the repulsive forces would increase. This is the lowest energy state of this particular molecule, and therefore it exists in a planar shape like that. Now, if you're going to draw that on a sheet like this, you can say, okay, I'll draw the boron in the center. You can draw an atom in this direction, an atom in this direction, and an atom in this direction. And notice that the angle between any two would always have to be 120 degrees. So that's kind of a, a visualization of what it would look like, everything in the same plane structure like that. So that's a simple example of a planar-shaped molecule.